remember your name. I'll send it to you. We're going to do walk through work. Does anybody need to um, leave, or does anybody want to have a uh, walk through work explained to them? Does everybody know what we're doing? Jim knows what we're doing. I was here last week, jo uh, last time, Joanne. Joanne. I'm Stella F. Okay. okay, so uh, does anybody have any, would anybody like to explain to them what we're about to do? I'm jumping in, so. You're jumping in? I read the, the, I read the landing page online. Cool, cool, cool. It's, it's real simple. It's real simple. All I do is I, um, it's, a, it's basically about you and your work. And it's, but you can participate as much or as little as you like. I'm going to set my timer. We're going to work together for 20 minutes, so you're going to work on your own thing, okay? And then we're going, when the timer goes off, I'm going to answer your questions about your creative process, okay? So the me and the title is you. Watch me work, that means we're talking about you, okay? All right, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I'm um, Brady, Dan, or somebody. Okay, because we're also streaming online, and if folks want to contact us, do you want to tell them? Yeah, then they'll be. No, I can't remember your name. Miranda. Miranda. Oh, like in the temple. Yes. There you go. Okay, I got it. All right. You missed your phone. Great. Turn up the microphone. No problem. Miranda's going to tell you how to get in contact. Yeah, go for it. Yes, so you can go to howlaround.tv, which is where we're streaming live right now, and there's a little comment section where you can write in questions. Or you can tune in on HowlRound's Facebook page, or you can write questions on the Public Theater's Instagram at Public Theater NY, or you can go on Twitter <laughs> and tweet a question using the hashtag WatchMeWorkSLP and the hashtag HowlRound, H O W L R O U N D. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Miranda, Miranda, and I've got your name now. This is really good. Okay. There's some empty space in my brain. I don't have your name. All right, so Brady, you're going to set the timer? Yes, I am. And I will set my timer, too. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, eight, oh. Good enough. I usually use a typewriter. I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to read some paper.
hopefully uh, we got some work done. Someone got a TV or a monitor or something. He went downstairs and I came up with a box. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, so somebody got something. Um, so now here's the part where I uh, listen to your questions about your creative process and offer up some answers. Anybody have any questions, thoughts, problems, difficulties, or exciting things that are happening in your work that you want to share? Do that too. Or I'll just sit here and balance my feet. <laughs> Instagram. So, what is it? Anastasia wants to know. Anastasia, the woman who is a famous person named Anastasia. Um, they want to know if I have any advice for someone who's performing their work, writing their work, and performing it. Advice like what? Good. Yay. Hooray. <laughs> That's really great. I mean, um, the only time I do I do that is when I do, you know, music in my band. So I, I, don't, I don't know. It's very difficult, but a lot of people do it well. Uh, so it's definitely worth doing. What's great about writing your own work is you get to, you know, you have more creative control. Um, she can also have more, like, she doesn't have to wait around for the perfect circumstance to do her work. But I don't know, does anybody here write or perform? Oh, Tamara! You know, it's funny, I was thinking, oh gosh, I hope she shows up, and there you are. Does anybody have any, um, any uh, thoughts? Does anybody here perform their own work? Yeah? Right. Hi, how are you? It's great to see you. No? I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe if she could uh, come back with a, sp a more specific question, you know, you know, um, if she's watching, she might, because um, I mean, we'll give her lots of encouragement, but I'm not sure what to tell her other than write it and perform it and, you know, try it out with your friends. I'm sure everything I have to say about that, she's probably already done. That's my opinion. But uh, write us back with a more specific question and we'll dive back into it. Anybody else have a super vague What are we going to do? No, you're just stretching. Do you have a question? Oh, it's, it's on its way to be. It's on its way. Great. What's your name? Ben. Ben. Okay, Ben. What's your cue? Question. Uh, my question is about um, working with images that like affect you when you're writing. Like right. you'll write something, you'll write an image that you um, are affected by, but then it, it takes you to a place that you start judging. And I guess like do you do you balance do you have a way of dealing with that judgment that comes with like finding something that you feel like might not have anything to do with what you're writing, but, but you're still affected by it. Like, do you have a place where you take that and put it, or do you accept it and then let it change the course of what you're writing? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so, so let me just go through it. Let me make sure I understand. So Ben, well, let's just, Ben is writing something. He's writing, writing, writing along, and then he includes an image. Uh -huh. yeah. And then... So far, so good, right? You're writing, you're writing, and you include an image, good. But then comes some judgment about the image because it doesn't really have anything to do with what you're writing about? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And judgment, like, what does the judgment sound like? Can you just, like... Yeah, so the, yeah. the judgment, um... I guess, like, what the judgment sounded like just now was right. I was, like, writing along, and, like, uh -huh. I think this is a poem. Okay. But um, it was like, wait, like this sounds like it might be from another poem entirely. Uh -huh. Like, 
maybe this is something um, that, that doesn't that doesn't belong here. And, and, right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of judgment. Like yeah. maybe this is something that doesn't belong here. Kind of judgment. Yeah. And it, like maybe it's not actually serving this as a story. And maybe it's not actually serving what I'm writing as a story. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That kind of judgment. What I suggest. Suddenly there are a thousand people downstairs. <laughs> it's like a, a convention of saleswomen or men. It's like super quiet. What I would suggest is like keep writing. I mean, still, you know. But it, it's like if you're driving along. Or do you drive then? Yeah. Okay. So you're driving along and you see, oh look, there's something. Uh, stop the car. Get out of the car. I don't know if that tree is really supposed to be there. You stop the process, right? I mean, that's not a great uh, analogy, but you stop the process. The idea is to keep going. Okay? Maybe it's going to take, maybe you come to a fork in the road and you take it and you go. Okay? Post-its are also handy. If you really think, oh, this, this seems like it's not part of, you can write it on a post-it or a separate notebook. You have a notebook there. You might have a separate notebook for just random things that don't belong. Thank you for bringing it down there, is that, is that, is that, would, could that be helpful? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think post-its were a really good idea. Post-its are fun, you know, because you can just, I mean, you can get ones in a color that you really enjoy, you know? Because the judgment thing, it sounds like it's stopping you, and then, yeah, and then, and then you're not writing, and then you don't get to cross the finish line. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just start writing slower. Okay, okay, okay. Post-its are great. Or just, yeah, yeah. Um, but those ne the sort of voices that, that question whether or not you're on the correct path, those kind of voices need to be dealt with. Writing fast helps. You know, writing, that's why we write with a timer, you know, in this, in this uh, workshop. And this is why I, I finally remembered to bring this. It's a timer, and you know the difference. Watch, I'm going to show you two things, and you're going to tell me. Tell me, which is the timer, and which is the phone? <laughs> Got it, right? Yeah, I know, right? It's tricky, because the phone is like, I am your be-all, end-all. Look, I'm even pink sparkly on the back. And a friend is texting, ooh, wrong, and this is the timer. This is really good, because... It only does, you know, a couple things, and they're all related to counting up or down. Yeah. And you set it for 20 minutes, and then you can focus and get your work done. These are really, really, and they're, they're not that expensive and battery operated. I bet you can get a solar powered one. You know, so, okay, but good question. We all have that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, Fana. Um, hey, that's really simple. Oh, good. I love some. I love simple questions. Um, I actually don't know what what is your writing process. What is my writing process? Yeah, because I don't want to do it. What's your writing process? I think I just try to type out as much as I possibly can, and then go back and try to like. Do you type out as much as you possibly can, and then yeah, go back and rework? Yeah. Yeah, or just like get out the thoughts. I I don't like really. Bad structure, like, you know, that's okay, no, no, I, I don't believe that. I, but yeah, just try to like blur it all out. Right. Go back and sort of tone and outline and make sense of the structure. Uh -huh. So you outline after you've written a draft? Yeah, because I think for me it's like more about like getting specific scenes I have in my head out or like, right, right, right. Love, like dialogue and like writing how I think the character would speak. Right. Um, so I, I try to get that out first. Cool. Because that's like the joy of it for me. Okay. And then okay. going back to the place and ordering. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, so it's, I, I kind of do the same kind of thing. I am only, I kind of try to combine the two things more, you know? Because um, my favorite thing about writing is being in the flow. You know, have you all felt that? Is it, yeah, you like when you're just like cruising along, it's like woohoo, you know? Um, and to do that, we were talking to Michael about that in class today, right? To do that, you have to combine a sort of um, organization with the stuff you really like. 
you know, you know, if you want to be Oregon, it's like a road trip, again, just driving. If you're driving on the road trip, you know where you're going, you're going to California, you're going to get there to the Santa Monica Pier, you know, and you can just kind of relax and enjoy the scenery, because you know where you're going, kind of, sort of, and you can enjoy the trip, you know? Sometimes if you don't have a, a, a plan, it's kind of like, uh, kind of looking around. No, in writing anyway, maybe not the road trip, but in writing sometimes, you know. Um, you might be just avoiding something that you don't like to do, which is, might be structured, not that you don't like to do that. But, but so I, I would say when you come, when you're thinking of scenes that you like, put them down, type them down in outline form. What's wrong with that? Like, oh, I got an idea for a scene, cool. I don't know where it's coming, I don't know. I'm going to put it on the page, number one. Oh, I got another idea for a cool scene. I got great. I'm going to put it on the page. Does it come before or after that? Oh, it comes before. Oh, so that's number one now. Oh, I got another great idea. It comes after the two. Oh, good. Idea. It comes in the middle of it. Oh, great. Then you start to see the structure. You see, so it's fun. You know? I'd say hold off on the dialogue. If you like the dialogue a lot, hold off on it until you kind of, you know, some. Because of dialogue, I mean, you write beautiful dialogue, and it comes easily, more easily to you, maybe then save it. It's like, it's like a, so there are people who say, you know, life is short, eat your dessert first, you know. But, uh, I don't know, I'm a parent, I don't, I don't, I don't I, do the, do, you know, we tell our son, do your academics, then you can watch your idiot machine, we call it, which is another word for the iPad. But, um, you know, do, you know, do your homework, and then you can, so do the thing that might be a little difficult, maybe. And then you can get into your fun flow with the confidence that you've got kind of figured out. You've done the hard, you've done the difficult work. Does that make sense? Um, you know. Did that evolve over time for you? Or is that did, did, that, that, did that evolve? Did my practice evolve over time? Yeah, like was that always sort of how you approach playwriting? Or just like writing for television or I know, this is about you though. No, no, no. no watch me work is about you. Yeah, but watch me work is about you though. Oh, you didn't come in for the preamble. Oh, I didn't tell you. See, this is what happened. It's Vana, I know Vana from like outside, from the streets, you know, we hang out on the corner and shit. Uh, and I, you, you missed the preamble part. Watch me work is kind of like a weird title because it's actually about your work and your creative process. But I can, but I can talk to you, I can talk to you. Sidebar, we can sidebar on the corner, on the streets. And we're standing on broken glass and talking about shit. Anybody else? Oh, yeah! Oh, all right! All right! Did the two questions relate to each other? Oh, well, we'll figure out. Then we'll tell us if they relate to each other. So, go ahead. She asked, How can I write characters and not seem like I'm trying to make, trying too hard to make them? Relatable, like relatable, like real, like what does that even? What does relatable mean? Will somebody explain it to me? Somebody knows. Relatable, yeah. Tell me. A relatable character. Right? Yeah, a relatable character. Yeah. What's a what's a relatable character? Well, I think it's like a character that um, we see that we because it doesn't feel like they're so far from. Well, from us, so a person that right. we feel like we could see on the street, a person that we feel like we could see right here, that we could come talk to, and not someone that um, has been so crafted that they're not a real person. Not a real person. person. Right. A relatable character. It's, it's, such, a stra it's such an interesting um, concept. Because I think, like, like Meghan Markle, for example. <laughs> I know, she just had a baby, <coughs> which is great, hooray. Is she relatable, do you think? I, I, I think she's pretty. I know, some people say yes, some people say no. But she seems relatable, doesn't she? This is a long way around of answering the out-of-stage, it's a really good question. Because what you want is someone who seems relatable, like Richard III in the play. We don't, not the real Richard III, but Richard III, the character. Is he relatable? <laughs> He is in relation with other... I think what we do is we get these concepts in our mind that make it difficult to write, you know? 
So, so what you want to do, Anastasia and everybody, is we want to fill our characters with specifics. And maybe the character is relatable, like Meghan Markle. She seems relatable. Um, and maybe the character is relatable, like Richard III. He's in relation to other people and other things. I would just say get real specific about your character's story. Get real specific about what they want, why they're in your play, for example. Get real specific about um, what your character wants and whether or not they're going to get it by the end of the show. Just get specific. And because relatable, it means different things to different people. There's a joke in White Noise where the character Ralph, a white guy, says, yeah, yeah, I changed all the char your black characters, I cha made them all white people because I made them more relatable. So for this white guy in that moment, a white character is more relatable. Some people don't find people of color relatable. So it's tricky. I just say make them good and, you know. But it was a really good question. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know? Cool. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. I'll talk. Yeah. What's so, your name? Nell. Nell. How are you? I'm well. Nell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I came and I thought, okay, I saw it online that you, and and I didn't show up the first two because I didn't know about it. But yeah. And I thought I'm gonna try to give some structure to my. I have a goal. I want to write a musical theater. I want musical. Hey. <laughs> So here I thought, okay, I showed up with nothing, right? My, I have notes in my, so I look, okay, right. let me search for this. And I realize I put together, I'm trying to lend structure to things a lot. Right. So I feel, oh, it's going to motivate me. So you're kind of answering, chiming into, like, my, my creative challenges, process right. challenges along these questions, right? Right. So I see my, out, my um, calendar was two years ago. And then things took over where I had to, you know, I made money on other things and okay. nobody's paying me to do this. So right. I guess I'm going to kind of get down to brass tacks. Like, right. I feel like if I'm on a job and I have to deliver for somebody, I, man, I deliver and I right. write that piece or I write that thing. I hear you. And now I got to impose that on myself. So it's, it's a mind blowing thing and it's historic fiction. Right. Oh. Nice. So I'm really, I can sense the whole and I get these, ma you know, really magnificent, you know, images, sense, feel, hear, yeah, yeah. see? But then when it comes to, man, I have to chip away at this, that's where I get, like, wow, a little overwhelmed. Right. So I guess that's relatable, because maybe... Totally. Yeah, man. Right. Break it down. Yeah, see, you've got, see, isn't that great? You know exactly what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, in theory, then I got to sit there and actually write it. Yeah. And imagine, like, I love that you say, get real specific. What do they want? Who are they? What's the pack, right? That's what I want to be in that world, and I want yeah. to... But I guess, you know, I have a question for you, but it's about my process. It's almost like, okay, somebody's paying me. I'm under deadline. i got to deliver. So now i got to give it structure. Right. And nobody's going to pay me just yet for this until I show some right. evidence, right? right, right? right. So I kind of want to ask, like, how did you... Go from once nobody was paying you, then somebody right. are pay somebody's paying you. Right. right, and I still do things that nobody pays me for. I don't take commissions for plays. Ooh. And That's I write when I write songs for my band. People don't pay me. I okay. just I just sit down and write. So there's lots of things that I do that people don't pay me for. Right. Oh, that's see, that's cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so there's, but, but I, I think underlying everything, for me anyway, is this, is this org, organizational structure thing. It helps me get shit done. Just, your own, you impose your own, like you, yes, s you structure I impose, it. I, I don't know, I impose, I, I sort of, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, that 1984 novel, you know, what is it, the, the contradiction of liberation is, Thought, thought speak, or? Yeah. What I want to say is, underneath everything, I have structure to this. That's so mad, this. That's really This is cool. magical, and yeah. it's not, it doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's not your phone. I'll just say that's that again. It's, uh, it sounds so silly, but that phone, it, which is a great, wonderful device, hooray, we love our phone, hooray. It's, you know, it's crack, right? It's not, it, it's, so yes. something like this, which is just what it is, uh-huh. Practical and simple, right? Yes. And it only does the thing that you need it to do. That's cool. Um, 
and you can watch the numbers go down, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's Sometimes. a little game with ourselves. Exactly, exactly. Like and it's that. not like tomato. Uh, someone said, there's an app that you can put on your phone that does the same thing. It's not the same thing because it's on your phone. Good. So cool. this kind of thing, what you do now is set it to 20 minutes. That's a nice amount of time. This is what we just did here, right? Yeah. Set it to 20 minutes. And, and you sit down and you write every day on your project. Your project, your wonderful, loving project that you love so much, yeah. right? And if 20 minutes seems too stressful, it's like you're married, you're married, you're going to be a marathon runner, right? Right. Then you start out with a little less, you, you run for, try 10 minutes, we lower the bar, we just lower the bar, we get it so low, you can actually be successful every single day, you put in your 20 minutes, and it accumulates, right? Like yeah. compounded interest. Yeah. Over time. You know, and if you do that for a whole month, you know, wow, you will have accumulated all this work. And it doesn't matter what, you know, you, you can have a notebook and write longhand yeah. ideas on my project. You can have, you know, I don't like scenes. You guys excited by scenes. I'm just saying, well, maybe put them in outline form, you know? Yeah. Or Bonnie, you can even, if you like scenes, get index cards, the, the small ones, the three by five, I think it is and write your scenes on index cards and then organize them in your outline without actually doing the, mm -hmm. the chronological outline, right. the outline thing. That yeah. You might, it's like, man, some people don't like that. That's, so, that's right? Really, yes, really helpful. And you just, small, small incremental. steps. Incremental. Like when kids learn to walk. It all starts out very slowly. Yeah. You know? And then, yeah, you, we still might get overwhelmed, but, but it's only 20 minutes. And if you want to turn on your timer and go, ah, for 20 minutes, that's okay, too. That's perfectly fine. Or go, for 20 minutes, that's fine, too. Or the, like, this, the doubt creeps in. Like, this may not be good. Well, let it come in. I know. That's kind of what's yeah. in your, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, so what? I'm going to keep going. Right. Talk back to it. It's, you know, if you're, if you're, it's talking to you, you can talk back to it because it's all in your head. So, you know, have a conversation. Not too long. Just, like, shut up. Shut up. Talk to the hand conversation. Talk to me after I'm done. Or write down what is going on in your head. 20 minutes. Because I don't like being motivated by fear. I don't want to do that. You know, I've been right. there and I don't want to, you know, right. so I've, like, reform, reform. Okay, right. chip away, break it down. Sure. 20 minute increment. Sure. And if that sounds too much, 10 will also, 10 minutes will also work. Pick a time during the day that's going to be your writing time. Do you have a time during the day? I have a okay. lot of swing time, so that's what okay. I do, part of my equation. Like, okay. I have to, okay, when am I going to dedicate time to that versus, you know. Great. So yeah. prioritize your writing and your swing time. If you're, are you a morning person, an afternoon person, a night owl? Afternoon. Okay, great. So if afternoon is your time. You know, whether it's right after your lunch break or what, whatever it is, uh -huh. right before your lunch break, you know, you go to lunch and the first 20 minutes is writing and then you have your lunch, you know, prioritize yeah. it like yeah. that. I can think of it that way. Yeah, and just try, see what happens. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, I'm here. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This particular 20 minutes seemed very long, and so instead, and it, sometimes it, it seems like five minutes. Right. But today it was like, well, how did, did they really set this? Um, so what I, what helps me is to start to doodle, so that I, I, I don't want to just stop. Right. Right. Because then I feel like I can't get it going. Right. 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 right so right. then to just keep going, I start to try to. And, so, and then the doodle got me into the next thought. Yeah. That's great though. Doodling is also encouraged. <laughs> you know? You know? Or you can just write the same stuff. I mean, it sounds like the shining, but that, you know, you could do that. You know? I mean, you could write something like, you know, I'm waiting for the next word on the, I'm waiting for the next image. Where is it? And then, Or you could just write stupid shit. I love doing that. When I don't know what to, you're like, oh, what's the next scene? I don't know. I just write some stupid shit. Like, oh, gee, yeah, they did it. That's cool. And then, da, 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 da. 
and then I get to the scene that I really like. Oh, goody. You see, just like no person. Right, right. Or, or, judge. It's stupid shit. Ha ha. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's stupid. Yeah, that's stupid shit. Okay, keep going. You know what I mean? And then you, you might look back when you rewrite or you look at the outline or whatever and you go, oh, I know exactly what's supposed to be there. You know? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, do it. Anybody else? This is when we all dance. <laughs> in our heads. Oh, what? In our heads. In our heads. We danced last night. We were dancing last night, weren't we? Right over there. In that room. We were. I even got Oscar to dance. He's like, you'll never get me to dance so much. Five minutes. It happened. He was, he was, he was a good dancer for somebody who said you can't dance. Okay. I'm sorry. We have another Instagram. Oh, great. People like Instagram. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, Carla wants to know if you have any advice for young writers who are struggling with blank pages. Huh? You get out of the blank page. Get out of the blank page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it all. I see. I have the same answer to everything. <laughs> Just set the time. You know, because I think that people we have blank pages because we're telling ourselves that it's not any good, right? I mean, it's not like all of a sudden, Carla, have you lost the ability to, you can't type anymore, you know? You know, and it, is that, oh no, I, oh, I broke all my fingers, you know? Or you forgot how to form your letters. I mean, if it's something like that, then this is probably not the show that can help you. But um, if it's just, I have blank pages because I'm sitting there going, hmm, then I just say, so write some shitty shit. You know, write some shit, you know, because I think the word that's missing from that is not just blank pages, it's blank pages that I think are really good, you know. So write some blank pages that aren't any good. And join the club of those of us who write shit. <laughs> Come on. Right? What? Well, yeah, great. Go. Question from Howrose. Yeah. Um, how do you start working on a play that you get out of the drawer after a long time and want to finish and rewrite? Oh, that's great. That's great. That's a great question. How do you work on a, a play or anything that you that you wrote a while ago, you put in the drawer, and you want to rewrite? I would say read it aloud. I would say, and and just to, to for yourself, I say stand, stand up, get off your behind, and. Stand it, whatever you're writing. I mean, I would not suggest doing this in Starbucks or whatever, because they might call the police. It's probably what those guys are doing. We're doing a play. No. Um, but they, you stand at your desk and read it aloud. Or walk around the room and, and read it aloud. But definitely, I would say read it aloud. You can start to hear it and start to get into the bodies of your characters. I think that's super, super, super helpful. I always read my work aloud or, you know, Always, always. It doesn't have to be a special occasion. It doesn't have to be a play to read it aloud. You can start to hear it, you know, feel it. You read your work aloud, Mom. Sometimes. What people tell you to? Read your work aloud. Read your work aloud. Your sister tells you to? That's her, like, number one advice every time. Because I also, when there's typos, she's just like, oh, you should read it aloud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. But reading them aloud helps you feel it. And if it's a play, it's going to help you take one more step toward what it's going to be when it's produced. Something that's said aloud. My son came to a production of White Noise the other last week, and he, he said, and he looked at me and said, Mommy, they're saying all the words that you say. <laughs> Why are we doing them? They're copying you. And I was like, yeah. Uh, it was really sweet because he'd heard me say all the words out loud in our apartment. I'm reading them and I'm doing all the speeches. He's like, why are they copying you? So, yeah. That's really sweet. Anybody else? You're, you're allowed. <laughs> and it's okay. That's why we're here. I guess this is sort of 
like, okay, this happens to me, but I'm asking you if you do it too. Like, okay. So okay. Okay. Does do, do things come to you that you start? It actually starts out loud. Like it starts, you're saying something, or you're like moving, and you find something that you wanna get um, down on the page, or maybe, right. or you find something that you like think about, like wanting to perform at some point. Right. Like, this happened to me yesterday. Like, okay, I, so you were minding your own business, but you were moving around, and you said something. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. And then you went, huh? And then what did you do? I recorded myself. Good. And then what did you do? I sent it to my partner. Good. And then? And now I haven't thought about it until right now. Oh. Okay. Well, you can listen to it and transcribe it, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it can be the beginning of something. Yes. That's allowed. Yeah. I guess it just... Okay, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what my question is, but it um it felt like a one person show, like when I was just like in my apartment doing it. But okay. I don't know if it needs to stay that way. Okay. Why don't you start writing and see? Because a lot of plays start with just one person on stage. Now is the winter of our discontent, right? Richard yeah. the third. And then a whole bunch of other fucking people come on, you know? <laughs> but it starts, I think, pretty much that dude, right? Um, so you don't know. It could just be the beginning of it, you know? Or it could be a one-person show that you can perform, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't have, I mean, they, you know, they, they, ideas come from all over in, in all sorts of ways, so any way is valid and good. You just have to take the next step, because it's not going to write itself. You know that. I mean, it can give you a little bit. It, it came, you know, it met you halfway. You have to do the work now. You know? How exciting. Yeah. Five minutes. Okay. Anybody? Like, I just love talking about process. Um, but you know, people like 
uh, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Susan Howe. This, I love I love language quotes. Susan Howe, Emily Dickinson, yeah. Anne Carson. Those are she's really great. She has a wonderful book called Arrows the Bittersweet, which is about desire and language and probably all sorts of things. Arrows the Bittersweet. Anne Carson, A N N E, I think Carson. Great writer. Um, you know, Nikki Giovanni, uh, great writer, so many great poets. Um, the lost poets, you know, jazz musicians. If you can listen to a line of jazz and sing it back, that's like a poem, you know. just while walking or driving a car or you know, riding the subway or whatever. It's really important. I didn't mean to stand in front of you all that time. Sorry. Uh -huh. Huh? Oh, we've got a time? One minute? Anybody have a burning question? You go home and go, why did I ask her that? The answer to everything is keep writing, basically. So if you don't have keep writing, keep writing. Get one of these if you feel like splurging, you know, 10 bucks or whatever they are on Amazon, you know, and I don't own the company, so it's not like I'm making any money from them. But just keep writing and just, and be brave enough to write shittily. Write some shit. Just write something, you know. Because you'll feel happier having written something than having written nothing. So that's the truth. So are we back next week? We are back next week. Uh, next week? <laughs> Sorry. So we're back on the 13th at 5 p.m. Anything else I have to say before we go away? Okay, thanks for being here. Thank you.